On the last video series, Lyle was talking about boat diving. And he mentioned something called a safety stop. Yeah. You ever wondered why we need to do a safety stop? What's the purpose of it? How do I do it properly? Well, today we're going to give you some tips, tricks, and suggestions on how to do a safety stop like a pro. Welcome to Everything Scuba. Hey guys, welcome to Everything Scuba. I am Lyle. I'm Josh. We are uh, scuba instructors here in the Midwest, and if you're a first time viewer to our channel, welcome, we're glad you found us. We are here talking about, well, everything related to the world of scuba diving. So if you're like us and you love to scuba dive, dive into everything scuba. Tell your mama, tell your friends, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, find out everything you need. That's right, tell everybody you know. Uh, today, we are going to talk about safety stops and uh, how to do one like a professional. So, a uh, safety stop, we're going to tell you about the logistics, the whens, the wheres, the hows, and the whys. We're going to talk about some techniques involved that might make your safety stops a little easier to perform and look good doing it. And we'll talk about some of the variables that might make a safety stop more difficult. So, Josh, first off, let's just define what the heck is a safety stop. Well, a safety stop is just a small decompression stop that we're going to do at... 15 feet on our ascent, and it's going to let us off gas or release some of those nitrogen bubbles from our tissues that have built up while we were at depth. Right. Now, if you guys remember, during your open water class, we brought out this horrendous dive table, the RDP, and you learned all about that. Uh, and we learned that depth and time are the two biggest variables when we're breathing compressed gas. And as recreational divers, typically we're going to be breathing air or maybe nitrox. Nitrogen is that molecule that gets forced out into forced into your tissues under pressure, and as you come back up from that pressure, that has to be released back into the circulation, and you're going to breathe it out. And so we want to learn how do we safely get rid of that nitrogen because we're trying to avoid what DCS or decompression sickness. Right, that's a bad deal. We'll have future episodes talking about DCS. There are very few reasons why you should not perform a safety stop. Uh, most boat dives, you're gonna be diving to a depth and for a length of time that yes, you are going to have a nitrogen load that you need to get rid of. And so that should be performed almost every time with a few exceptions that we'll talk about. When we're shore diving, mm -hmm. a little different than boat diving. It is. Should we do a safety stop then? Well, it kind of depends. You know, if. If we're able to swim in and gradually get shallower or, or essentially complete our safety stop in that 15 feet range while swimming around taking pictures, that's to me an ideal situation. So they'll tell you five meters or 15 feet. And which part of me should be at that depth? Oh, we would like your chest level right. to be. We want the bulk of your internal organs to be at right. 15 feet. And is there a specific length of time I should be there? I think generally it's recommended three minutes. Yeah. Uh, but follow your computer. Right. Some I mean, computers based on depth are gonna change that. Yeah, and we're definitely gonna talk a little bit more about your computers. So you might see some specific hand signals being used during safety stops, but at the start, during, and at the end. Tell me one. So one, when we're starting our three minute safety stop, this is our ceiling, this is our time. This is a three minute safety stop. Right. Yeah. Another one I'll use with our students, our other divers, is give them this signal, level off right here. This is our ceiling, this is our floor, stay in that 15 to 18 foot safety stop zone. Most of us nowadays, we're gonna wear dive computers. If not, maybe on your console, you have an analog depth gauge. My dive computer tells me the depth. So, if you're wearing a wrist-mounted uh, computer, I typically like to wear that on my right wrist because what's in my left hand? Your LPI. Right, so I'm adjusting my buoyancy as I'm ascending, letting out a little bit of air. Remember, we're not adding air to our BCD to get to the surface. And so I like to have it in my right hand. I'm monitoring my depth, and also I'm gonna see my countdown occur once I enter that safety stop zone. What other ways can we kind of figure out where we're at in depth? Well, one that 
students generally pick up on, but you know, we notice if I start to descend a little bit, my ears are going to need to be, I'm very sensitive to depth with my ears, I'm going to need to equalize. So in a matter of two feet, my ears are already telling me something is wrong. Yeah, so uh, you, can, you can use that. If you have to equalize and you're taking your eyes off your computer, a uh, pretty good chance that you've sunk a little bit in the water. You need to adjust your buoyancy to get back to that safety stop level. Another way to make this easier for you is to orient yourself to something. So if you're in the water with more experienced divers, or say you're on a boat dive when there's a dive master there who's been leading the dive, that guy's done hundreds of safety stops. He is going to be really good at what he's doing. And so uh, I encourage my students, I encourage my divers, look at my head. Position your head level with my head, and there's a pretty good chance that you're going to be at the appropriate depth Continue to monitor your own equipment, though, to make sure that you are there. Right behind me here is our good buddy Jeff with Triton's Realm. Uh, this was in a dive that I did with him uh, on the west side of St. Croix. And he is in this nice vertical up-down position. You can see his legs are crossed, his arms are crossed. He's just using his breath to control his position. He's in a vertical position. Uh, I prefer to do my safety stops in that position also because I can keep my head and chest easily in that 15 foot range. And remember, we're not going to be exactly at 15 feet the entire time. We're going to ascend and descend maybe a foot or two uh, just based on your breath control and sometimes surge and, and sea conditions. Sure. But can you think of any reasons why we would not want to be in a vertical position? Well, one that comes to mind is I like to dive side mount. And often if I have, if I'm typically diving two tank side mount, it's an uncomfortable position to be in, to be head up. It is, uh, you're much more trimmed to be in a horizontal, you know, floating position. That does give me a smaller range to keep my core in that one to two feet right. range. But um, also rebreather divers, you know, typically if they're doing a deco stop, they're still not going to be head up. Well, if someone either had a, a real emergency, a catastrophic loss of gas, uh, something like that, it would provide them air to get to the surface as well as perform their safety stop. Okay. More likely, it's probably someone was not responsible, ran them, their air very low, and still needed to complete a safety stop, and they're just trying to cover all the bases. Sure. And so I, when Josh asked me previously, uh, when should you perform a safety stop? Uh, one of the reasons that you might not perform a safety stop would be if you had not monitored air or you had a catastrophic loss of air and you're low and or almost out of air, you should not stop to perform that safety stop. You need to get to the surface. The minimum amount of air that I should have in my tank when I get back on the boat is what? Well, a lot of times the captain's going to tell you, but I would say at bare minimum 500 PSI. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. but I paid for all that air, Josh. I know you paid for all that, but if we're diving as buddies, I'm going to say that 500 PSI reserve is really mine, and I'll keep some in reserve for you. Right, so that 500 PSI is for my buddy. If he had an issue at the emergency stop, or safety stop, then, uh, or if we had an emergency, I can donate that to him. We also have to think about how much air we're going to use when we ascend from depth, okay? So if you're an open water diver, uh, ascending from say 60 feet, what's the average amount of air do you think I would use during my ascent and a three minute safety stop? You know, for, for that ascent and your safety stop, you're gonna use two to 300 PSI. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have to think about that and add that on to your ending reserve yeah. to know that you have enough gas for this. So basically I'm setting aside 800 PSI out of a full tank that I paid for yeah to allow my ascent and give my buddy emergency air. Uh, for divers maybe who are a little unsure of their buoyancy, uh, maybe you're taking your first open water classes and your instructor wants you to be stable in the water, that's a nice mechanism for you to put your hand on and just stabilize yourself in the water. So a nice thing for the boat to offer, don't you think? That, well, a couple words of caution with that. Uh, the first time I had seen that and my wife had seen it, we were in French Polynesia, mm -hmm. uh, maybe three to four foot seas. My wife gets very motion sick. She thought, 
hey, this bar's here, I better hang on to it. Unfortunately, three to four C's, or three to four foot of C's, she is just bobbing up and down, uh, thinking she's doing the right thing by hanging on to that, and it actually made her motion sick. Right. Um, as well as, you know, we start getting a larger variance than we really want with our safety stuff. Exactly. So that three to four foot change, that's yeah. a big pressure change initially. And so, uh, however, we wanted to thank, I was on that same trip and witnessed what happened. And we want to thank Angie for chumming the water for yes. us afterwards, which brought in a whole bunch of black tip, tip sharks. So uh, we appreciate that. Hovering. New hand signal that you learned in open water class, it might look like this. Some people do it like that. Uh, the hover position where you are totally neutrally buoyant and you can maintain your position in the water column without sinking or floating. Right here on the screen you can see Jeff from Triton's Realm. This is what a dive professional looks like when he's doing his safety stop. Arms folded, legs folded, he's not sculling with his arms, he's not kicking, he's purely using breath control here to make sure he stays at that 15 foot safety stop. So. What are some of the tips that you could give our viewers on how do we achieve that position and maintain our position? So the biggest thing for maintaining our position at Safety Stop to me is proper weighting. You've got to be properly weighted. You don't want to be too heavy where you're adding air, uh, but you also don't want to be too light where you're fighting to stay down. We told you we're never going to add air to our BCD during our ascent, and that is true. However, once you reach your safety stop, you may find to hold that position without kicking, you're going to have to add a little bit of air to your BCD. I'm gonna give you a demonstration here with two pieces of paper. Imagine this is you in the water, you're a piece of paper, and you're just floating horizontally. I'm gonna let go of this piece of paper. Now imagine you're still this piece of paper, but you're oriented vertically. Watch this piece of paper drop. Why did one drop faster than the other? There's a lot less surface area and the resistance is lower when you're in that vertical position. Correct. So what that means in terms of buoyancy, you may need to add a little bit more air to your BCD in a vertical position because you're going to slip through that water column much more easily than if you're in a horizontal position where you're presenting more surface area which creates drag and doesn't allow you to drop. Stop moving around, just relax. No sculling with our hands, no kicking. The more relaxed you are and comfortable you are in that position, you can just use your breath control. Remember, number one rule is you're not gonna hold your breath to maintain your position in the water. And we're not gonna take big giant gulps of air either because that's gonna make us more buoyant. And we're not gonna breathe all of our air out because that's gonna make us sink. And so we want to be conscious of just gently feathering our breath in and out and being aware of our position. The last hand signal we're going to talk about is the all done. So I'm going to make sure my buddy, I have his attention. When my computer says that I'm done, I'm all done. I'm going to make sure he sees that. Now I'm going to wait just because I'm done. I'm not going up. I'm going to wait for him to give me the same signal and we're going to ascend together because he has my emergency gas and I have his. One thing that we need to look at, I'm going to put up on the screen here a chart that looks at pressure and volume relationships in the water. We have a series of videos that looks at that. If you haven't seen it, click the link above. But you will see that in the last 33 feet of your ascent to the surface, you have the greatest percentage of pressure change in terms of decreasing pressure. And so we, we still want to maintain a slow ascent to the surface. In our world, we never want to go faster than one foot per second. So even after your safety stop, we're still going to slowly ascend, maintain our control on the way to the surface. For you seasoned divers out there, uh, let us know what we left out. Tips and tricks that you've come up with, leave in the comments below. We'd love to hear them and others will learn from it. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, if you got some tips out of it, please feel free to hit that like button down below. Uh, we'd love to have you join us as a subscriber on our weekly shows and feel free to share it with other people that you might know. Maybe your mom. You never know. Uh, stick around for some more great Everything Scuba content right here.